What's going on guys, it's Sam, and today I'm going to show you how to speed up your rendering in Premiere Pro. In this video, you'll learn about Premiere Pro's hardware encoding versus software encoding, the best bitrate for exporting videos, and how to create export presets. Alright guys, so let's talk about how to speed up your rendering in Premiere Pro. So Premiere Pro, when you're rendering, it has the capability of doing hardware encoding or software encoding. Hardware encoding is generally a lot faster than software encoding, because software encoding uses mostly the processor, which is always bogged down by your operating system and the apps that you're using. And the hardware encoding is used for your graphics card, and your graphics card is not nearly as used as much as the processor on just regular tasks. So hardware encoding will always be faster than software. So let me show you how to choose between the two um, in your export settings. All right, so if we do controller command M to open up the export settings window, I'll uh, change my camera here to uh, make things easier. Okay, so we got the export settings window open. Um, we see that everything's good here, but let's scroll down and we see encoding settings. Now mine's default set to hardware encoding. And as you can tell, it says utilizes available NVIDIA hardware for quicker encoding. Choose software encoding to disable hardware encoding, which may increase encoding times. And that's because software encoding uses the processor. Not really sure why they call it software and hardware because they're both hardware. Um, but at the end of the day, hardware encoding is going to be better because your graphics card does not use nearly as intensively as your processor. And you can better use your graphics card while rendering um, if you choose hardware encoding, especially if you have a big time graphics card. If you're a gamer and you love graphics cards, choose hardware encoding and your videos will render like that. Now this setting is only available under certain codecs. Um, I highly recommend H.264 for literally everything that you want to post on the internet, um, and it's always available under H.264, so please follow that. Um, it might be under QuickTime, not sure, but either way, I would just export out that MP4 videos through the H.264 codec. Alright guys, so I really want to talk about bitrate now. Um, it's kind of confusing as to what it is, um, and I'm going to do my best to describe it. So we're looking at export settings right now, right? So we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom under our H.264 codec that we're trying to render out of. And we're going to see that we see bitrate encoding, VBR 1 pass, VBR 2 pass, CBR. So CBR usually makes a bigger file when it doesn't have to be. Um, it stands for constant bitrate. Um, that means that if you do CBR and you choose 8, then it's going to be 8 megabits per second the whole way through. If you do variable bitrate, then it, it will do less than 8 when it believes that the video doesn't need as much bitrate to render. So if, just like this, so like it'll do less bitrate in the leaves behind, behind her because they don't really move at all, but it does more bitrate on her herself. That's, that's how it renders. It'll render each frame when it notices that it really needs it, which is like a, a frame that has a lot of effects where there's a lot of changing pixels, where there's so much stuff going on, that's when it's like, okay, use that eight target bitrate. Um, but when there's not much going on, variable bitrate allows it to not have to use the eight. Now the one pass and the two pass, and the two pass encoding just makes things a little more crisp. Um, and that's like an eight target bitrate, right? But then the maximum bitrate is 12. So if it's trying to render hard, and it really wants to show off the effects, you can prioritize the effects with a higher maximum bit rate. And so that would only be necessary if you have certain sections in your videos that have a lot of effects and you wanna showcase those effects to the best of your ability um, and you wanna make sure they look great, so you would use two pass for that. But now your video, your file size gets a little larger. So I usually just go to one pass. Of course, down here you can see the estimated file size. It doesn't change between either of these three settings. Um, and that's because it's estimated, so. Um, but if you have a higher maximum bitrate, it'll be a larger file because sometimes it'll do 12 bitrate. So I generally stick with variable because it retains the same quality and it's a small file size. Um, and I guess to dive a little bit more deep into what bitrate is, it's basically just think every single pixel that's being uh, rendered out, um, this determines the quality. So it de determines how many bits are being involved in the rendering of each pixel in the video. So it's in the thousands, megabits, it's actually 8,000 kilobits. You just wanna make sure you're in the right ballpark when you're rendering, just so you can have a great quality video with a low file size. That's, that's the threshold that we're looking for. Now, if you just want movie quality, just crank it up to 50. It's not gonna make your video look any better. It's just gonna make it more like the source, okay? But if you do eight, you, can, you can't distinguish the two, okay? 50 bit rate is only useful if you're trying to render a 4K video and you want to put it on the movie screen. That's the only time you ever see that difference in detail. Otherwise, the internet is never going to show you that detail. So let's just let's just keep it at eight. 
and we will always have the highest 1080p file, uh, best looking file we could possibly export. Okay, so we're set with our bitrate. We know we want to do hardware encoding. All right, so we got that set here. Uh, we want to do match source on the height and width and uh, the frame rate and all this stuff. We're good, okay? This is how we like to export videos all the time, that 8-bit rate and that hardware encoding under H.264. So every video we want to use this these settings, okay? Um, but the only way to do that is if you save the preset. So all you have to do is get all your settings right, right? Like have the audio like this. We didn't even mess with the audio because it's already set uh, totally fine. That's super standard, all this information. Um, but yeah, everything under video is set. Um, and all we have to do is hit this save preset button up here in the top right. So if you just uh, hit this save preset button, you can choose what you want to name it. So we're going to call this um, 8, actually no, 1080p, oh no, sorry, <laughs> match source hardware, and then 8 uh, MBPS. All right, so that means it's a match source size, it's hardware encoding, and uh, it's set to 8 megabits per second. All right, so once we save that preset, you'll see that it changes the preset up here from custom to what we just typed in. And you can find it at the top of your list. I have all these other presets here, high bitrate SRT um, and, uh, and low bitrate proxy. So you can, you can save as many presets as you want. I think this one was a mistake. It's just called new preset. <laughs> okay, so I hope that all makes sense, guys. I hope you know how to uh, save presets now and set to hardware encoding and set the right bitrate um, so that your files aren't too huge and they still look great. I always have a lot of fun talking about this stuff, so um, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, so this tutorial is from a full course on Adobe Premiere Pro. Go to powerits.com slash Premiere Pro or click the link in the description down below.